Okay. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 33 and 34. I'll read in English first. But a married man is concerned about the affairs of this world, how he can please his wife, and his interests are divided. And a married woman or virgin is concerned about the Lord's affair, her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. But a married woman is concerned about the affairs of this world, how she can please her husband. Okay. Now these two verses are very important. These two verses are very important. These two verses are not followed by many people. Because even Christian families think that Christians have to get married if they don't find someone uh, find a Christian. But these verses say it very clearly a married man is concerned about the affairs of this world. How he can please his wife. Now actually we can go to verse 32 also. Okay, you read There it says that I would like you to be free from concern and a married man is concerned about the Lord's affair, how he can please the Lord. So it says that a married man is concerned about, can be as concerned about the Lord, but when he is married, he can, you know, then he is more concerned about the world and the wife. Now, now, of course, this is different from each person. For instance, for myself, I'm married, but I'm devoted to the Lord. And actually, most pastors are married. But Paul is just talking about a person who is not married like himself. Then he can devote his time to ministry. And then verse 44 says that an unmarried woman also is, is concerned about the Lord's affair. And then a married woman is concerned about the affair of his of this world, how you can please her husband. So these five verses tell us that we don't have to get married. Now let us say together, we don't have to get married. Now, if the Lord provides for you a husband or wife, then you can get married. But if the Lord has not prepared for you a person, you don't have to get married. So I hope you can accept this teaching in the Bible. Now the purpose of the marriage 
na maana na maksudi ya ya ndoa is not just to have a husband or wife if not sio tu ya kwamba mtu awe na mume au mke and have children na kuwa na watoto but the main thing is that the husband and wife can unite together ni kitu cha muhimu ni kuwa kwamba uwaweze kuunganika pamoja and serve God together with the family na kutumia kutumikia Mungu kama jamii because in the family they can to You know they can serve God together. Na unajua kwa jamii wanaweza mtumikia Mungu kwa pamoja. They can care about people. Wanaweza jali watu. They can care about you know like visitors to the church. Wanaweza jali hata wageni wakitembelea kanisa. They can invite people to the to the home. Wanaweza alika watu hata kanisani mwao. To give them meals. Kuapa chakula and care for them and bring them to Jesus and a husband and wife serve God together that is the purpose of the Christian marriage but many Christians they marry a non-Christian and Washington told me some Christian Christian women marry a people of another religion. Watu wa Kristo wengine huenda hadi kiwango cha kuwa watu ambao si wa Kristo na ni wa dini nyingine. And they were forced to give up Jesus. Na wanalazimishwa kuachana na Ukristo kuanza kuandama idikadi za dini nyingine. And also some um, Christian women marry a nominal Christian man na Kristo nao wanaoleka kwa wanaume ambao wanajidai tu kuwa wa Kristo na si wa Kristo halisi because in this country kwa sababu kwa kwenye nchi the parents are Christians ikiwa wazazi ni wa Kristo the children are naturally called Christians watoto wanaozaliwa huitwa kwa halisi ya wa Kristo but they have no relationship with God at all lakini hata wao wenyewe huwa hawana uhusiano na Yesu They don't go to church. Let me ask you. What are you doing? People who don't go to church. What do you mean by going to church? They don't read the Bible. How are so many believers? They don't pray. How are they? Are they Christians? Where they are, what are Christians? They are not. They are Christians. You know, they say they are Christian. When I say how are they Christians? Christians are people who have a living relationship with God. Christians are people who have a living relationship with God. It's not just believing in God. Sio tu kuamini tu, but have a living relationship with God. Wana uhusiano ulio hai na Mungu wao. To follow God, kumfuata Mungu, to love God, kumpenda Mungu, to obey God, kumtii Mungu, and to serve God, na kumtumikia Mungu. When people just say they believe in Jesus, watu wale tu husema kwamba wanaamini katika Yesu, but are not following Jesus. Lakini hawafuati Yesu. They are really not a Christian. Wow, see what Christ. And when you marry someone like that, now you are into in a hill. In a home there is no prayer. Na katika nyumba hamna maombi. You won't talk about Jesus. Hamongei kuhusu Yesu Kristo. You won't go to church together. Mwende kanisani pamoja. You won't serve God together. Hamtumikii Mungu kwa pamoja. It's not Christian at all. Hiyo sio ndoa ya Kristo. It's following the ways of the world. Hiyo ni kufuata mambo ya dunia hii. But I know that you are under much pressure. Najua ya kwamba katika shirikizo kuu la kuoleka ama kuoa. First, you might have curiosity. Jambo la kwanza unaweza kuwa na tamaa ama uchu wa kujua. You wonder how it is to have a dating. Unataka kuelewa jinsi ilivyo. You wonder how it is to to you to be kissed by a Unataka kujua iko inakuwaje mtu anapokuziwa. Some of you may be even curious about how is it to have sex. Wengine wana ule uchu wa kujua ni jinsi gani ilivyo kuwa katika kile kitendo cha ngono. Now let me tell you something. Wacha niwaambie jambo moja. Now many people don't talk about that. Watu wengi huwa hawaongelei masuala ya kimapenzi na ngono. What I want to say is Anyone, a guy or a girl. Nini bora nitaka kusema hivi ya kuwa mwanaume ama mwanamke? When you are touched by someone of the opposite sex. Ikiwa unaguzwa na mtu wa jinsi tofauti. Or kissed by someone of the opposite sex. Ama uweze kukuziwa na mtu wa jinsi tofauti. It's very easy for to be aroused sexually. Ni raisi sana uwewe kuweza kwa mtu hisia. I want to tell you that no one can stand this continual touching. Ninataka kukuambia kwamba hakuna mtu anayeweza anayeweza stay mili 
ndio hali ya kuendelea kuguzwa you be so sexually aroused ataweza amshwa hisia zake he cannot stand for hayezi stahili hisia hizo in that condition no one can say no to premarital sex katika hiyo hali hakuna mtu yote anaweza kwepa ngono za kimapema the way to say no to premarital sex jia ya kuzuia kitendo kama hivyo is not to have intimate contact with someone of the opposite when you have intimate contact then it will lead to sex Do you understand this? Je, unaelewa hiyo? If someone keep touching your body, mtu akiendelea kukuguza kwa muda, you cannot stand it. Always is the same thing is here. No one can stand for. Hakuna mtu anaweza stahili hisia hizo. Say it together. Hebu tukaseme pamoja. We have to avoid contact, you know, a physical contact with an a someone of opposite sex ni lazima ni vyema kujizuia kuguzwa na watu wa jinsia tofauti ni vyema kujizuia kuguzwa na watu wa jinsia tofauti if someone of the opposite sex keep touching my body mtu wa jinsia tofauti akizidi kuguza ama kushika say it say it It's hard to resist the sexual temptation. Do you believe this? So you have to say no in the beginning. Ni vizuri ukatae vitendo hivi mwanzoni mwake. Not at the end. Sio kuviruhusu vikutendekee na utaki kuvikataa mwisho. Okay. Now the, so the first thing is avoid the contact the body contact. Jambo la kwanza ni kuzuia kuguzana mwili kwa mwili. Believe that your life has a wonderful plan in God. Amini ya kwamba Mungu ana mpango mkuu maisha ni mwako. God has a wonderful plan in your life. Mungu ana mpango wa ajabu maisha ni mwako. Now the second thing is, Kidichapili. when it comes to your time and your family, or other people pressure you to get married. Wakati unapopata shinikizo kutoka kwa wazazi ama watu wa jamii ku ili uoleke mabuoe, can you stand firm? Jiwa waweza simama imara? I know it's very difficult. Najua ni vigumu sana na shirikizo kama hizo kutoka kwa wazazi na watu wa jamii. And one way Satan uses jia moja shetani hutumia is financial pressure. Ni jia ni msukumo wa kifedha. Because when many women in this country wakati kwa sababu wanawake wengi nchini hapa if they don't get married wasipoleka it's hard to have a living. Ni vigumu sana kukua na jinsi ya kujistahili kimaisha. So I hope you pray to God. Ni vyema naomba kwamba umombe Mungu and provide for you akufungulie njia ya mapato. So you can stand for ili uweze kusimama imara and, and so your parents cannot agree that you are, you don't get married. Ili wazazi wako wanaweza kubaliana na uamuzi wako kuhusu ndoa. When you cannot find a Christian na ikiwa huwezi kupata Mkristo. If you don't find a Christian then don't get married. Ikiwa hupati mchumba ule Mungu amekupangia, kwa hivyo haina maana kujiingiza katika ndoa ambayo itakuletea madhara. That's the biblical teaching. Hiyo ni maandiko ya kibiblia. And when you marry a non-Christian, na ukioa mtu ambaye si Mkristo, your faith will be weakened. Imani yako itatingizikwa. And you can lose salvation. Na unaweza kupoteza hukumu. If you don't follow God. Ikiwa hutaweza kumfuata Mungu. Okay. Now, do you have any question about this? Je, mna swali kufikia hapo? Because I want to go to another topic. Kwa sababu nataka niachane na hiyo kipindi niingie kwa kipindi kingine. Anything you want to ask. Swali lolote ambalo nataka kuuliza. I tell you when it comes to a time when your family pressure you to get married. Ikiwa utafika wakati ambapo unasukuma na jamii yako kuoleka. Or they might tease you. Wa ama waanze kukutisha. 
No one likes you. Hakuna mtu anapenda. No one wants to marry you. Hakuna mtu anataka kukuoa. So hurry up, I'll give you someone you marry. Harakisha ujijishikilie kwa mtu yote ili uwaleke. They might give you all kind of pressure. Wanakupea kila aina ya shinikizo. I hope you stand firm. Natumai ya kwamba utasimama imara kidete. Because God loves you. Kwa sababu Mungu anakupenda. God can bless your life. Mungu anaweza bariki maisha. God has a wonderful plan in your life. Ana mipango thabiti mahsusi kwa maisha yako. Okay? Any any question? Swali lolote? Okay, now if no no any other kama mimi waulize. Mungu kama unaweza swali gani hapo? Aha. Okay. That's okay. They don't have a question. Okay. And then, before I end, I want to say I encourage the Christian men here, the boys here. Enjoy God's presence by loving God more. You know, the reason why I want to pray for you is so you can experience his presence any time you can experience his peace and his love and you treasure your life so you don't look for sexual pleasure I hope that the Christian boys and girls here Young men and young women don't look for sexual pleasure. And you love God and follow God. And God is very happy to bless you. Now, if there is anyone here, then you have a continuous sexual relationship with someone. I urge you to come to God now and repent. If you continue to have a sexual relationship with someone, please, uh, what, let me. Nataka kuwauliza kwamba mkuu very keen of what he's saying. He has said just a statement right now that if you have been in a continuous you relationship, Munasia. Nataka mkuu angalifu sana wale unataka msikize mambo anasema so that tukimalizia wewe uko mahali tuko. Okay. So if someone is having a continuous sex with someone, ikiwa kumekuwa na mtu akiwa katika hali ya ya ngono ama kimapenzi kwa muda, your life will be destroyed for sure. Maisha yako inaenda kuharibika. You will go down here. Utaenda kumalizika. You can lose salvation. Unaenda kupoteza wokovu. So it's time for you to come to God for repentance. Ni vizuri uwae ukuja kwa Mungu kwa toba. Please forgive me. Umwambie Mungu Mungu lisamehe. Set me free from the bondage. Uhuru kutokana na ile kushikamana na na ile hali. Give me deliverance. Niweke huru Mungu. Give me freedom. Nipe uhuru. I need Jesus. Naitaji Yesu. Okay, let us Come to God now for prayer. Oh Lord Jesus, let everyone stand up. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh yes. Please forgive our sins. Yes, And wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. Help us to say no to premarital sex. Set us free. Help us to realize the destructiveness of premarital sex. How we can destroy our life. Lord, we need you. We want you. Please forgive us and set us free so that we are totally free. Lord Jesus, we need you. Yes, we want you. Please bring holiness to us and help us to enjoy God. Help us to know that God cares about us. God wants to bless us. God has a wonderful plan in our life. Welcome Jesus. Please close your eyes. Open your heart to Jesus. I need Jesus. I want Jesus. I need Jesus. We need Jesus. Without Jesus. 
We don't have eternal life. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. And bless us.